Imagine a human cousin so rugged that Olympic powerlifters would pale beside them. A species sculpted by ice, famine, and five-ton prey. Today, we resurrect the Neanderthal. Not in flesh, but in vivid detail. And uncover how brutal winters forged bodies that bordered on the superhuman. Neanderthals spread across Eurasia for roughly 400,000 to 40,000 years, most of that stretched during the frigid Chibanian stage of the Pleistocene. Picture endless permafrost, blizzards that swallowed the horizon and herds of wool-clad giants. In that arena, only anatomy built for hardship could survive. Shorter frames, Heavier engines stand a Neanderthal beside a modern Homo sapiens, and you'll spot the height difference first. They averaged 14 centimeters, 5.5 inches, shorter than people born after World War II. Yet, scales tell a different story. Males massed around 83 kilograms, 183 pounds. Females roughly 66 kilograms, 146 pounds about 20% heavier than present-day humans of the same stature. Their heft lay not in fat, but in steel-thick skeletons. Shoulder blades, femora, rib arches, even kneecaps were denser, sometimes double the cortical bone of ours, forming a living exoskeleton. Layer dense muscle onto that frame, and you have a predator adapted for point-blank combat. Neanderthal hunting rarely relied on distant projectiles. Instead, they closed the gap and drove two-meter wooden spears into rhinos, horses, straight-tusked elephants, and the mighty woolly mammoth, equal in bulk to an African bush elephant. Wielding such lances demanded ferocious upper-body power. Strength rewritten paleobiomechanics suggests an untrained Neanderthal male could bench press around 200 kilograms, 440 pounds, and a female roughly 160 kilograms, 350 pounds, loads that catapult modern athletes into elite brackets. Endocrine clues hint at chronically elevated anabolic hormones, amplifying muscle growth and speeding recovery. Oral histories they never told are etched instead in the bone, thickened triceps ridges, enlarged deltoid tuberosities, attachment scars from cables of sinew. That strength translated into feats difficult to fathom. Carrying 27 kilograms, 60 pounds of butchered meat across 48 kilometers, 30 miles, about 138 laps round a football pitch, was likely routine after a successful kill. Bodies built to break, and heel durability matched force. Systematic surveys show four out of five recovered skeletons bear trauma that later knitted itself whole. Compound fractures, crushed vertebrae, even amputations that completely healed. One elder endured the loss of an arm, a shattered clavicle, blindness in one eye, and ear canals sealed by bone grown over repeated blows yet lived long enough for every wound to calcify. Many injuries stemmed from face-to-face -face hunting, others from conflicts with wolves, cave lions, and bears. In 74% of cases, bone tells the tale of animals fighting back against human aggression, not the other way around. Genes inherited from this lineage still influence keratin production, thickening skin, hair, and nails molecular shields against frost and impact. Oversized joints extended ranges of motion unimaginable to us, letting a Neanderthal explode upward or twist sideways without shredding ligaments. Hands were power tools, broad fingertips and thumbs flared at wide angles, trading fine manipulation for a vice-like clamp on stone or wood. Metabolic furnaces. Their chest walls flared into barrels, housing lungs about 20% larger than ours. Air entered through noses that were long, wide, and turbocharged, moving oxygen roughly twice as fast as any modern nose can manage. 
Each day demanded 4,500 to 6,700 calories. A nutritional gulf so wide, you'd need two columns on every food label. One for Homo sapiens, one for Neanderthal. Yet these titans of muscle were sprinters, not marathoners. Short femora and wide toes kept feet on the ground longer, generating explosive thrust. Achilles' tendons were long and slender, good for rapid acceleration, but poor at storing energy for distance running. Muscular biopsies, extracted from the ancient genomes rather than preserved tissue, predict a high concentration of fast-twitch fibers primed for short, brutal bursts. If you ever find yourself on a track with a resurrected Neanderthal, challenge them to a 10-kilometer race, not a 100-meter dash. Conservation interlude. Before diving deeper, a brief yet crucial note on conservation. Half of Africa's bush elephants have vanished in just three generations, echoing the fate of the Neanderthal's own megafaunal prey. Enter Planet Wild a membership platform that funnels monthly contributions straight to field projects. One standout initiative in Tanzania strings bee fences, rows of buzzing hives, that harmlessly redirect elephants away from farmland, saving crops and giants alike. Every cent is audited in public video reports. I'm already on board. If you want in, scan the QR code, use code EXTINCT10, or follow the link in the description. First, 150 supporters ride free for month one. Cancel whenever you choose. Engines tuned for bursts, not marathons. We left our Ice Age sprinters on the starting block. Genetic reconstructions show Neanderthals carried alleles favoring fast-twitch muscle fibers, the strands that detonate power but burn out quickly. Combined with short femora and wide, ground-gripping toes, these fibers launched a Neanderthal forward like a catapult. Their Achilles tendons, long and narrow, were ill-suited to storing kinetic energy for distance travel. Unlike the stiff, broad tendons prized by today's endurance elites. Result? A creature that could close ten meters on a woolly rhinoceros in a heartbeat yet fall behind in a cross-country chase. Lungs, noses, and calorie infernos. That explosive style devoured oxygen. Enlarged rib barrels housed lungs up to 40% larger than ours in some specimens. Cabera, two tops, nine liters. Air roared through wide nasal passages at double modern flow rates, warming and humidifying each frosty gulp. To keep those metabolic furnaces stoked, an adult demanded 4,500 to 6,700 kilocalories every day, the equivalent of two marathon runners refueling after back-to-back -back races. Little wonder isotopic analysis brands Neanderthals as hypercarnivores. Roughly 70% of those calories came from meat, sliced off megafauna they killed at spear length. Super senses housed in super skulls, raw brawn is only half the equation. Neanderthal cranial capacity averaged 1,640 cubic centimeters in males, 1,460 cubic centimeters in females, around 30% larger than contemporary humans. Yet shape matters more than size. Their vaults bulged rearward, allocating extra cortex to vision and smell. Eye sockets ballooned 15% beyond ours, hinting at razor-sharp acuity and superior night sight. Processing that high-definition feed demanded neural bandwidth, inflating overall brain volume without necessarily boosting abstract cognition. Oversized occipital lobes, robust olfactory bulbs, and a face projected forward beneath a heavy brow gave Neanderthals a look both familiar and alien. Muscular necks, needed to stabilize those weighty skulls, completed the profile. The third-hand hypothesis, open a Neanderthal mouth and you'd confront teeth that dwarf our own. Early researchers blamed bone-crunching diets, 
but biomechanical tests peg their bite force around 700 newtons, merely high-end human. So why the jumbo chompers? Microscopic wear on anterior teeth points to tool use biting, clamping hides, sinews, or wooden shafts while hands performed delicate cuts. In effect, their jaws acted as a third hand. Enlarged dental arches simply made room for the gripping surfaces. Trauma, healing, and the cost of prowess, extreme lifestyles, leave forensic signatures. Beyond fractures and amputations, many skeletons display thickened ear canals, bony growth from repeated cold water exposure, and fused vertebrae indicative of heavy loads shouldered year after year. Remarkably, most injuries show complete healing, attesting to robust immune function, and perhaps community care that protected the wounded during recovery. Sprint, feast, repeat, Picture the daily rhythm. Dawn over snowfields. A hunting band fans out silently. A sudden sprint. Spears thud into mammoth flank. Muscle and tendon strain. Bones brace. Victory means gorging on fat-rich meat, then hauling dozens of kilograms back to rock shelter caches. Night falls. Lungs pump frigid air through cavernous noses. Eyes larger than ours, red starlight dancing on ice. Broken ribs knit over weeks. Spirits prepare for the next chase. Intelligence re-examined bigger brains, tempt easy conclusions about genius. Yet, cognition is more than raw volume. Inside the Neanderthal skull, regions linked to social strategy and language may have been proportionally smaller. While zones for vision, spatial mapping, and body control ballooned. That trade-off makes sense when ambushing mammoths in white-out snow demanded split-second depth perception, not delicate diplomacy. Tool finds back this up. Their stone points rival ours in craftsmanship, but show fewer leaps in design. Innovation was incremental, not explosive. Think master artisans refining a trusted template rather than Silicon Valley disruptors. Still, they mastered fire. Crafted birch tar adhesives, tanned hides, strung shell beads, and buried their dead with care. No small intellectual feat. A genome that whispers, not roars fast forward to today. Every non-African Homo sapiens carries roughly 1-2% to 2 Neanderthal DNA. Popular headlines promise super strength or carnivore cravings, yet most alleles act quietly. Studies link Neanderthal variants to keratin in hair and skin, immune tweaks that aid against Eurasian pathogens, even slight shifts in circadian rhythm for life at higher latitudes. Performance boosts in sport remain statistically faint and fiercely debated. Our Ice Age cousins left us tools for survival not tickets to the weightlifting podium. Why they vanished? Their disappearance around 40,000 BP still sparks debate. Cooling pulses pinched resources. Sudden warm spells reshaped hunting grounds. Small scattered bands struggled against demographic drift. Meanwhile, incoming Homo sapiens formed networks that stretched hundreds of kilometers, swapping tools, genes, and ideas. We may not have wiped out Neanderthals directly, but our numbers, trade, and pathogens likely nudge them toward the tipping point. Final reckoning, picture it one last time. A squat, barrel-chested sprinter crouched beside a smoldering juniper fire. Frost halos his breath, eyes the size of chestnuts scan a moonlit plain. In his hand rests a spear he could drive through oak. Yet his other palm gently tends the embers that warm a wounded clanmate. Strength and tenderness, resilience and ingenuity. Neanderthals carried the full spectrum of humanity, tempered by an unforgiving world. We share a faint echo of their bones in our own and a sharper echo of their story in our imagination. Honor that inheritance. Push your limits. Protect the wild. 
and keep asking what it truly means to be human. Subscribe to Violent Origins for more deep dives into prehistoric powerhouses and check the links in the description for articles, sources, and conservation projects.